Hello everybody, my name is Alex and welcome back to another historical look video. Oh dear, it's been a while hasn't it and I guess I should probably start by apologising for the gap um, between the last ones when Rise and Fall was just about to be released uh, up until this one. It's been quite a while but there's many reasons for that, many reasons which I've gone through in update videos. So yeah, I'd just like to thank you for your patience but we're going to focus today on the Cree civilization, and this is quite an interesting one to do. It's quite a bit different to some of the other ones I've done, maybe. Maybe because they focused more on war, whereas the Kree are more kind of, well, pound maker, especially for peace. So it's going to be quite interesting to look at him. As always, I have missed certain things out just for the length of this video. Um, it's going to be roughly the same length if I stop bam uh, rabbling on kind of thing. So yeah, I hope you enjoy. Make sure if you're new, you hit that subscribe button for more stuff like this. I've also got a historical um, series going on with Scotland, which I would love some feedback on. And I would love people to kind of have a look at that and tell me how you want me to kind of integrate the two things. Um, it's on Civilization 6, but it's also got a bit of history. And yeah, make sure you like the video if you enjoy it. And just Leave your comments and thoughts down below. So shall we start? So the pound maker of the Cree. Um, but before we actually get into him, why don't we start with an important note for this video and something that I thought was really interesting and really relevant for this. Um, so following the announcement of the Cree in Rise and Fall, Milton Tutusis, I apologise, my pronunciation is obviously shocking as you all know by now, um, who is a present day Cree elder, criticised the Cree's portrayal in Civilization VI in an interview with Polygon, which I'm presuming is a magazine. Um, I'll provide the link below so you can actually take a look at the article if you, if you so desire. In the interview he explains how he feels the game perpetuates the myth that First Nations had similar values um, that the colonial culture has and that is one of conquering other peoples and accessing their land. This is totally not um, in concert with our traditional ways and um, world view. Therefore, I'm going to try and present the Kree in, a more ac in the most accurate way possible as a peaceful people who very much valued trade over war. So I hope I can do justice to this and to the Kree people with, with this kind of with this in mind. So, who are slash who were the Kree? So, the Kree right now and who are, they have been like this throughout history are a group of, nat of native North Americans who are most prominent in Canada, more precisely the Plains regions between Alberta and Quebec. If you know your Canadian history, that'll obviously make a lot more sense. Um, and in, they're also present in America, where they are particularly prominent in Montana, which is obviously um, a northern state. I think it is anyway, I'm presuming it is. Historically, however, the Cree inhabited a larger area of land in North America from Lake Superior westward. Um, a study, of, a study from 2015 indicated that the Cree population in Canada is just above 300,000 people, with around half of those living on reserves. Still very much a prominent people, they're still in existence, which is really, really interesting and nice to see. Um, traditionally, the Cree travelled around in bands, essentially groups of people who moved around and hunted together. These bands and the people who made up their populations appear to have been relatively fluid in their formation and citizenship. Although being part of a band was seen as essential for survival, um, because of obviously strength in numbers, so you've kind of you've got these fluid groups, people coming in and out, and yeah, but they're all aware that you need to stick together um, to survive in these kind of harsh conditions. So beyond these bands, there was little hierarchy above. So we're looking at Pound Maker as the leader. It's not as if like. Well, groups would form close alliances with neighbouring tribes, but there was little comparison to structures we may have seen in European countries for, at the time, for example, or through history. So essentially, the kind of it, it's not the hierarchy we would expect as maybe an, an American citizen now or a European. We're kind of used to looking back in history as, oh, you have the king, and then you have the people, you know what I mean? You have the court, etc. You have the dukes, whatever. There was no kind of um, structure like that. The, a lot of them acted very independently. Now we have taken a look at the Cree in general, let's take a look at their leader in Civilization VI. Poundmaker gained his name by the by English speakers due to his ability to attract buffalo into pounds. He was actually born with the name which is on your screen now because unsurprisingly 
I just can't pronounce this one, and I won't do the name the indu- in- injustice of, a, of making a really crap attempt. Um, he was born in Rupert's Land in 1842 and lived until 1886 when he died in, a- in the Alberta Territory, Canada. Poundmaker was chief during a time of difficulty for the Cree, and he prioritised peace with the Canadian government and the pre- preservation of his Cree people above all. I feel as though stressing his prioritisation of peace is important in order to distance Poundmaker from some of the colonialist and imperial civilizations and leaders we see in Civilization VI, something which the Cree elder criticised the developers for. A key example of Poundmaker's desire for peace can be seen in the major historical event of his leadership, the Cree's role in the North West Rebellion, more specifically the events at Battleford and the subsequent Battle of Cutknife. What what a name for a battle, Cutknife. Okay. Following a shortage of bison in 1885, remember the Cree kind of live off bison, it's one of the main food um, sources, the Cree people were left facing possible starvation. As a result, Poundmaker led his people south to the small town of Battleford. The people of the town feared the Cree people intended to attack them and therefore they retreated to the nearby Fort Battleford. Shares the name with the town, very close. Although it is important to note Poundmaker's intentions were those of peace, not of war, something which the the civil, um, the this population in Battleford um, did, did not believe. The townspeople were reluctant to communicate with the Cree and left them waiting numerous days for a response. During this episode, many of the abandoned buildings in the town were looted, although who was responsible for the lootings is still unclear. The accounts differ from claiming that the townspeople had already took place, uh, took part in looting before the Cree arrived, whilst others lay the blame on Poundmaker's people um, and, and the Cree in general. What is clear, however, is that Poundmaker himself discouraged any looting from his people and attempted to prevent any looting which did ultimately take place. And then, following this, Poundmaker's people left the following day. The the result of the events of Battleford um, kind of it gained a disproportionate response by the Canadian government. Unlike Poundmaker, who clearly desired for a peaceful resolution, the Canadian government's response was to react using ex- excessive force. Over 300 Canadian troops were sent to confront the Cree, but they were defeated and ultimately forced into retreat. Significantly, once again Poundmaker demonstrated his peaceful intentions when he prevented the Cree warriors from pursuing the government forces, something which surely would have um, led to more death and destruction if they had um, chased them off. Instead, in a series of a, in, in search of a p- peaceful solution, Poundmaker handed himself into the government and spent a total of seven months in a high security prison. I mean, considering he did very little wrong, the, the punishment seems highly unjust and demonstrates the harshness many of the native peoples were subjected to um, from the European and the European descendants. His time in prison took its toll on Poundmaker's health as well, and he died in 1886, aged just 44 from a lung hemorrhage. In my opinion, the crucial thing to take from Poundmaker's story and this whole episode is that he was very much a man of peace and not of war, something which has actually been emphasised um, by historians since his death and something which is important to remember. As well as that, it's quite interesting to compare Poundmaker to maybe some of the other civilizations we looked at. So if we look at um, a lot of them, they're kind of stories of war, like Georgia's, Tamar of Georgia, there's a lot of war. Um, so we do need to think, wow, yeah. So Poundmaker was not as um, interested in war um, as maybe the others were. So now we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of the unique abilities, well, the two unique abilities, the unique unit and the unique building. It is important to note at this stage that we are going to draw heavily on the civilization write-ups on the website, especially for the unique abilities, Um, and I'll give my analysis as we go through as well. So, Poundmaker's unique leader ability is favourable terms. Poundmaker's goals of living in peace with surrounding tribes, this is a quote from the website, and governments benefits all his, all his allies. All alliances types provide shared visibility. 
However, Poundmaker also directly benefits with bonus food and gold from establishing trade routes. This is well summed up as Poundmaker and the Cree were slash are a peaceful people who prioritise trade, something which we, we, which we can see there. In addition to this, um, the Cree's unique civ ability is Nihita. I think I pronounced that right. Um, depending upon the community, the Cree identify themselves with several different names. Amongst them, we've got Nihita, which is the woodland Cree, kind of translates to. They had an extensive network of fur trade. As the Cree people explore, they start with an extra trade route and an opportunity to gain control of nearby unclaimed tiles. This very much is kind of part of that trade idea. That's where I think they've got this from. So we're looking at peacefulness, we're looking at trade, and this very much plays into this. As well as the other one, it's, it's benefiting you from pretty much staying at peace. That That's where it's going for. Um, for the claiming um, nearby tiles, I think it maybe plays into the idea that they were quite nomadic at times. So you've got them moving around, so that kind of claiming tiles, that's just a rough idea, but I think we've got the gist of both of them. The Kree's unique unit is Okichita, a replacement for the scout in Civilization VI. Their roles were much greater than just that of warriors. They were, seen, they were the sons of chiefs and provided protection to the people, as well as keeping order in the settlements, police buffalo hunts and were particularly intelligent and charismatic. Overall, Cree society viewed these individuals as superior and as leaders in both peace and war. The fact they are a scout replacement and not a warrior replacement stress, stresses the idea they were more than just fighters, although they were capable and very much skilled in combat. If we look at the Cree unique building as well, which is the Mecha Wap, um, me yeah, Mecha Wap, but we'll go with that. So Mecha Waps were a long-term feature of Cree society and provided housing for a large number of people. Made from birch backwood, they proved to be an effective shelter from the elements, which was relatively quick and easy to construct, something which is incredibly useful considering they were not portable. In Civilization VI, Mechawaps provide an early bonus to production, resources, food and gold benefits and when placed next to a bonus or a strategic resource. It depends on what you're placing them next to, but you, you get one of them. Something which emphasises their the Kree's occupation as traders and very much, it, again, it's not encouraging you to go to war, is it? So overall, if we're going to give a summary there, I think, like I've been saying throughout, my overall argument has been that we've got to look at maybe Poundmaker as, as a really peaceful uh, peaceful individual who wanted peace for the Kree. The Kree also play like that quite a bit in Civilization VI, so it's perhaps a little bit harsh to, to criticise um, the developers too much, because they are trying to press that, um, that they are a peaceful people, as well as raising awareness um, of their existence. I mean, I'd never heard of the Kree before, before Civilization Rise and Fall. So it's quite interesting to learn about all these new people, but also to have that respect there and hopefully portray them in the right way. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. If there's anything I've missed out, if there's anything I've got wrong, or that you'd like to add, especially on the kind of the unique abilities, I'd be quite interested to see if anybody's got any more information on that, then um, do let me know. I, there will be another uni, uh, sorry, an, another historical look video coming in the not too distant future, probably two weeks today, so it's Wednesday I'm going to upload this. So we're looking at kind of early to mid-April, I'd expect to see the final one, which is the second Indian leader. And as well, make sure you're checking out the channel for all kinds of historical stuff, civilization stuff, things like that. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. Thank you once again for sticking with the series. These will kind of become a little bit more regular as we head into the summer and I have more time. But I hope you've enjoyed this one. I hope you've learned something and I will see you next time.